All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to community. Let's stand up together as a as a church. I'm so excited. It is Christmas. Man, I'm getting into the season. This morning, as we sing this song, this song is this song is called "Come Now, Our King," and it kind of it follows the narrative of of the shepherds coming and and seeing the baby who would be their savior. And as as we sing this song, if you're familiar with it, I invite you to sing it. And if you're not, I invite you to just hear the words and and take in what that moment would have looked like. In Luke, we hear about the shepherds who, when they see Jesus, they go out and they tell everybody. And in this almost frantic state, they run and tell every single person they see in the town that our Lord Savior has come and he is in a manger. And that must have been a pretty incredible sight. So as we sing this, I invite you to have that same joy about the fact that our King has come. Bethlehem turns in tonight, a town lit up by candlelight. All the children tucked inside. Bethlehem turns in tonight. The angels start. The angels start their whispering about the one they're welcoming. No one knows what's soon to be As the angels start their whispering They sing glory in the highest They sing glory in the highest Come now our King Falls in once again. The shepherds leave for Bethlehem. A baby's cry soon welcomes them. Balance falls yet once again. They sing and we sing together. Glory. We sing glory in the highest. Come now. came here to save Oh Lord, we've been waiting So come now Our King Now my night is turned to day An empty manger, empty grave A baby's born so I can say and now my night has turned to day. Oh, we sing glory. We sing glory in the highest. Come now, our King.
that your baby boy would someday walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you and this child that you delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Oh Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Will you stand together as a church as we sing this? Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
You can be seated as we worship the Lord through our giving.
And uh, this morning we have something kind of exciting. We have the children who are doing a program for us. And I'd like to invite them to come at this time. And uh, as we hope to just enjoy our time together. Is this the right mic? Um, so I just wanted to thank all the parents for bringing your kids, letting your kids stay after church on Sunday and bringing them on Saturday. Um, it was really helpful. Sorry. <laughs> um, I want to thank Barry for coming up with this whole um, plan, this idea for the children's program. I think it's really cool. Um, and this manger that he made with his hands is amazing. And I think it's up to the Annie now for the children's program. <laughs> um, so um, welcome all of them up with me. Come on, kids. Come on up and take your spots. And Barry. town of Bethlehem looks like another silent night above your deep and dreamless sleep a giant star lights up the sky and while you're lying in the dark there shines an everlasting light For the king has left his throne And is sleeping in a manger tonight Tonight Oh Bethlehem, would you have missed while you were sleeping Where God became a man Stepped into your world today Oh Bethlehem You will go down in history As a city with no room for its king While you were sleeping While you were sleeping shivers in the cold trying to keep the Savior warm born among the animals wrapped in dirty rags because there was no room for him in the world he came to save oh Bethlehem what you had missed while you were sleeping where God became a man and stepped into your world a day. Oh, Bethlehem, we'll go down in history as a city with no room for its king while you were sleeping. 
while you were sleeping. United States of America looks like another silent night. As we're sung to sleep by philosophies that save the trees and kill the children. And while we're lying in the dark, there's a shout heard across the eastern sky. And for the bridegroom has returned, he's carried his bride away in the night, in the night. America, what will we miss while we are sleeping? Will Jesus come again? And leave us slumbering where we lay America, we go down in history As a nation with no room for its king Will we be sleeping? Will we be sleeping? United States of America looks like another silent night. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, give him another big hand. Wasn't it awesome? Yeah. I love children's programs. That's always a lot of fun. You never know what's going to happen. And they had costume changes. And I got to say, this year we stepped it up with the sharp sticks. I, you know, <laughs> a little nervous about that for a little while. I want to make sure that cleared out before I came up. But uh, no, they did an awesome job. And I appreciate everybody working so much and, and to do that. This time we're going to dismiss our children for Children's Church, so at this time the children can go downstairs and they have their own uh, church service, uh, Children's Church, where they can stay up here, whatever you'd like to do, uh, but that's typically uh, our Sundays. So this morning we are doing this series on Christmas, and we're doing it on this passage from Isaiah where it talks about the prophecy of Jesus Christ um, being born in Isaiah 9, 6. It says this, it says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We're looking at the different names of Jesus. You may not realize, but Jesus had several different names. And Isaiah tells us that one of the names he had that we're going to be talking about this morning is Wonderful Counselor. And to me, that's pretty cool, because I think that everybody needs somebody to talk to. Everybody needs somebody to talk to. You know, I'm convinced that one of the greatest struggles in life today that we struggle with is just letting our guard down. We all have, we all have these walls up that, that allow others to see only the parts of us that we want them to see. We, we carefully filter our image and the perception that people have of us. We're very guarded about that. I noticed coming in, I found myself being guilty of the same thing, that I'm exactly the thing I'm talking about. I walked in, Riley said, how you doing, Doug? I'm doing great, you know, and, and the reality is, am I really doing great? You know, whenever I ask you on Sunday mornings, how you doing? Everybody says, fine. I've never had anybody stop and say, well, you know, I got all this stuff going on, you know, occasionally somebody will open up. It's 
we were very guarded and we're very protected. It's 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 something that we typically say, I'm fine. What really when we say fine, sometimes it means I'm angry, sometimes it means I'm unhappy, sometimes it means I'm stressed, sometimes it means I'm not feeling well, sometimes it means I'm lonely. We say all those things, but we still say that word, you know, I'm fine. Uh, we're often asked that question, you know, but we really aren't. You know, it's kind of interesting for us. Um, this week has been, last couple of weeks have been kind of a, a, a struggle at the wall and house. And uh, so this morning, Riley came in and said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm fine. I'm great. Actually, I think I said, I'm great. Uh, but reality is, it's been kind of a tough couple of weeks at the wall and house. And uh, we've got a dog that we've had, gosh, Sadie's, uh, her birth certificate says 17 years, 8 months. All right? Or not birth certificate. They don't do that, I guess. But the dog license, whatever it is. <laughs> 18, almost 18 years old, and uh, we don't know how, we, she may have been a year and a half, two years old when we got her, so we've had her for a long time, and Sadie is, Sadie's a dog that, you know, she's not your typical dog, you know, like, she's not the dog, she's the dog that we got because we wanted a dog that would be loving, she's not that dog, you know, <laughs> she's, she's the dog that lets you love her when she wants to be loved, but otherwise, she's like a dog cat, you know, you go to pet her, and she'll kind of duck her head, kind of do her thing. But man, when you have those moments where she, she wants some attention, she'll come over and let you let you pat her head or rub her belly or and all that. She's quirky. She's afraid of boxes. Um, she has a lot of different things. She's kind of kind of strange dog. But uh, she's courteous. Uh, whenever you let her out, she'll come to the back door. She'll bark once, woof, and then she'll wait, you know. If you don't get there quick enough, she'll give you another courtesy bark. Woof! You know, and then she'll wait for a little while. You know, she's very patient. Um, she's, she understands what it's like living with the wall, and sometimes we need help with pets. Um, we'll forget to feed her. You know, sometimes the, bar, the dog will be, I mean, you know, like, not, not like for weeks at a time, but we'll look over the dog bowl, we'll be empty, and we're like, yeah, that dog bowl is maybe. Sadie's, Sadie's comes, she, she comes, she looks at you, she goes to the dog bowl. She comes, looks at you, she goes to the dog bowl. If you still don't get it, She'll go behind the door where we keep the dog to kind of nudge the bag out. Okay, Wallens, you got to know how to do dogs. You know, time to feed me. Here's your dog. You know, here's your dog food. So that's kind of interesting. But she's she's been going downhill. She's been struggling. And probably, you know, over the last, it's been for a while, but the last couple of weekends, it's just really been difficult. We're coming to that place where we're probably going to have to make some hard decisions there. And it's something I'm struggling with more than I thought I would. And it's something that's kind of difficult. It's kind of interesting. Yesterday I came in and um, uh, we came back from our, our Saturday thing and I was kind of putting some stuff up. So all Bryant and Kim's car here came upstairs and Bryant and Kim are here. Guess what they're doing? Our soundboard. I'm going to say Barry broke the soundboard since he touched it last on a Friday night. <laughs> but in reality, I think it just broke. So Bryant, without, I had no idea this was going on. Bryant just somehow winds up being able to borrow a soundboard that, that's amazing. And uh, we've got a new one ordered, but we're covered until that happens. So I came upstairs, and, uh, and Kim said, so I hear you having doggy problems. And uh, that's really kind of neat because, uh, you know, Bryant and Kim have just gone through something kind of similar with their dog. And uh, Bryant was kind of talking to me about it. And Kim just kind of reassuring me and just kind of telling me maybe, you know, sometimes – it's hard, but sometimes you need to do the right thing. And, it, you know, it's, it was, I, I want to tell you, it's kind of nice to have somebody to talk to. And, and we all need somebody to talk to. And you walk in the door and you ask me how you're doing, I'm going to tell you fine. But in reality, right now, we're kind of struggling a little bit because, you know, Sadie's become part of the family. And I don't think she's going to be around a whole lot longer. But we struggle. We, we, we have things that are going on in our lives that other people may not know about. You know, a few years ago, my mother-in-law lived with us, and you know, we're making that decision. You know, is it? You know, do we need to? Does she need to be in a nursing home? We can't keep up with her care. It's just, it's, it's, it's more than we can give her. You know, and she needs something more and something better. Those types of struggles. We have times where we struggle because we we experience loss. We have times where we struggle in our marriage, and we say it's fine, but it's not fine. We have times where we struggle financially. We have times where we struggle, you know, with with depression and, and maybe things that are problems that may be going on our work or our health. You know, and the reality is is that 
is that the list goes on and on, but we all need somebody. And while they're really good counselors um, to talk to, and it's, it's a good idea to do that, you know, sometimes if we need to talk to somebody, it's, it's, it's something that we often tend to not do. Proverbs 15 says this, chapter 12 says this. It says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who, is, he, he who heeds counsel is wise. What's that mean? He who heeds counsel is wise. It means sometimes there are times where, I don't care who you are, there are times in your life where you need somebody to talk to. You need somebody who may, will give you a different perspective than what you're seeing. There are times where you're still in the middle of, of, the, of, the, of the forest. You, can't, you just can't see the big picture of what's going on. You need somebody with an outside perspective to give you advice and just, just to help you, sometimes just to encourage you, just to support you. And Proverbs 19 says this, it says, whenever that happens, listen to counsel and receive instruction. We have, to, we have to learn to listen to people. Sometimes we think that we have things all figured out. But Proverbs says, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. And Proverbs 11 takes it a step further and says this. It says, where there's no counsel, people fall. People fall. Where there's no counsel, people fall. So if you're that person like I am so many times, and, and I'm, I'm totally this guy, I don't, I don't want to need anybody, you know. I don't want to need anybody. It's kind of like my thing around the house. I'll tease, you know, I'll tease the kids or I'll tease my wife. I don't need you. I don't, you know, they, they know that I'm messing around with them. But it's kind of funny. You know, I, I, I'm that guy who wants to do it myself. I'm that guy who wants to go through and just handle things on my own. But the reality is it says where there's no counsel, people fall. There are times where we all need to step outside and, and listen to advice and have somebody that we can talk to. You were not made to live life in isolation. You just were not made to live life alone. It's, it's, not, it's not the way God created you. And yet so many times, if there's times when we need the most uh, somebody to talk to, those are the times we retreat within ourselves, and it becomes very difficult. On the outside, everybody looking in says, hey, things look fine. But on the inside, um, we're hurting, but we're too proud talk to anybody, we're too proud to, to take it to the next step where it needs to go. And the reality is, is that Proverbs 16 says this, it says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You know, sometimes, sometimes we just need to understand that we've got to humble ourselves. James 4 says this, humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and then he'll lift us up. We, got, we, we really need to understand that about Christianity. We really need to understand about what this is. <clears throat> the whole premise of Christianity is that you are not enough. The whole premise of Christianity is, is that you, you need help. The whole Christian, premise of Christianity is that, is that we have fallen short of God because of the sin in our life. And that sin has separated us from God. And there's nothing you could do on your own to restore that relationship with God. You need something more. So James 4 says, humble yourself. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. It's an amazing thing that God does in our lives. Whenever, whenever He does this in our lives, when we come to that place where we say, I need somebody to talk to, and God, I'm going to talk to you. Nobody else may get it, nobody else may understand, but God, I need somebody to talk to, and I'm going to talk to you. And something incredible happens when we humble ourselves, and we get on our knees, and we talk to God, and we tell Him those things that we're struggling with, maybe those things that our friends don't know, maybe those things that our wife doesn't know, maybe those things that our kids don't know, but those things that you know what I'm talking about inside that you're having that struggle, this amazing thing happens when we humble ourselves and say, God, I can't do this. I need you. This, this power comes into your life. It's Jesus Christ as you humble yourself, and he begins to make you into something that you can't be on your own. He begins to reassure you. He, he lifts you up. When you're down, he lifts you up, but you don't get lifted up until you humble yourself before him and you recognize that you have a need. The way to recovery, the way to help, the way to peace begins with humility. I need help. Everybody in here, I mean, beginning with, with me. I need God. I need God in my life. I need Jesus. Um, everybody needs somebody to talk to. The one thing we need to understand is this, is that we need to make sure we're talking to the right person. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of people who want to tell you what to do. There are a lot of people who want to tell you how to live your life. There are a lot of people who are going to give you some pretty poor advice. I'm, I'm always amazed at how much, how much we let our culture give us counsel. 
I'm always amazed at how much we rely uh, on these people in Hollywood and these people who, who we, we, society has deemed to be successful for them to tell us the way we should live our lives. And we look to them sometimes for examples. And we look to them and we see what they're doing. And we see the, the messages that they're putting out in their movies. We see the messages that come out in the songs. And, and we just, we believe it or not, that is something that, man, it's their counsel. It's something that they're pouring into us. And it's not always right. We got to make sure that we're talking to the right person. I, I had my uh, so, some good friends of ours over the past couple of years. They they went through a divorce, and it was something that was very very hard for us. This was somebody that that we went to high school together with, and we we we've done things together with for the past you know a lot of years. And and as as I watched, and, and we know them, and we know them so well, we saw one party involved get involved with the counselor, and this counselor. That, that they were involved with was not giving them good advice. It was it was something that was something that would give some immediate relief, but not long term relief and peace that they were needing in their lives. And as as we saw this happen, and we saw this 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 direction and the counsel they were receiving, it, I believe the bad advice, I believe it cost them their marriage. The reality is this: is that we need somebody to talk to, but you got to make sure that you're talking to the right person. That you're listening to the right person in your life. And, and it's hard to sometimes tell what that is, but the reality is, is that Psalm 1 1 says this. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. What's that mean? It means that I'm not going to let somebody who doesn't know God tell me what life is supposed to look like when so many times the person tell me that and showing me that, when I look at their life, it's just in shambles. Right? If I want to understand how to do life, why in the world would I not go to the, to the God who created life, who created me, and who created you, to find out what this is supposed to look like and, and how am I supposed to live my life? What's, what am I supposed to do in this situation? I need somebody to talk to. I have somebody, and it's Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is awesome and powerful in our lives in doing that. It's amazing when you think about that, what our relationship with God means to us. It means that we have this opportunity to talk to the right person. You know, salvation is more than just, sometimes we talk about giving your life to Christ or accepting Jesus as your Savior, or being born again or being saved. And those are, that's all things that we need to do. But, but we tend to view that sometimes as kind of like a fire insurance. It's my hell insurance policy. and I'm going to do this, and whenever I do that, that's that contract with God, and then that way I'm all covered and I'm good. But the reality is, is that our relationship with God is so much more than just that. I don't mean to demean that because it's powerful what Jesus did on the cross in making it possible for us to have a relationship with him. But the reality is, so many times we initiate that, we, we begin this idea of having this relationship with God, and so we ask him to come into our hearts, and then we step back, and we close off again, and we don't let God inside, we don't let him become a part of our lives, we don't... Let them see the things that are so important to us. And it's just hard. God wants us to have this relationship with him where you feel like you can talk to God about anything. And we all want that. We all need that. We all long for that. And we've got somebody right there who wants that in our lives. I know that sounds, you know, especially if, if you've never given your heart to Christ. When I say that, talk to Jesus. I, I, I know it sounds just kind of, it sounds kind of strange, right? But I want to tell you something. It is exciting and it is powerful whenever you experience what relationship with God is really like. I mean, we get saved sometimes because we're afraid of what will happen when we die. We get saved for all these different reasons. But, man, when all of a sudden it begins to click in your life that God is your Father, and He's not just like maybe your dad who may mess up here on this earth. God is this this perfect Father. And He looks at you, and, you know, we go to our parents for wisdom. We go to them to ask questions. You know, I call my mom uh, pretty regularly when I'm cooking. You know, is this still good? It's been in the refrigerator for this long, you know. You know, you know. I'll call them. I call Judy Roberts. I ask her for advice for Thanksgiving. Hey, Judy, how do I cook this turkey? Yeah, I know she's cooked a lot of turkeys. 
There are people like that. And the reality is, is that you have somebody in your life who has all of the answers. He has all of the answers, and he's going to be right every time in your life. But we, we, we're afraid to kind of humble ourselves, or we just don't want to humble ourselves and talk to him about those hard things in our lives that we may be going through. Why should I talk to Jesus? Because Isaiah 9, 6 says this. It says before he's even born, it says that he is going to be an awesome counselor. He's going to be somebody that you can go to and talk to, and he will listen to you, and he will tell you the right things in your life. Now, does God speak to us audibly? Typically not, right? But he speaks to us through his word. This book is an amazing book. And we all have one probably. There's probably one in our house. If not, you could get, get one on the Internet. You can look it up on your phone. There's apps on your phone, great apps on your phone. They have the Bible on them, right? But you, do you realize what this is? I mean, you know we say we do, but do you realize what this is? This is God's words to you. This is God speaking to you. And it's pretty awesome as you pray to God about things that are going on in your life, and then you open up your Bible and you start to read, and you find this crazy thing begin to happen. You're talking to God about this situation. You begin to read your Bible, and you'll find that all of a sudden those words that were written so long ago seem to be speaking directly to you. And you know why that is? It's because they are speaking directly to you. Because God communicates with you. When we talk to Jesus, it is absolutely life-changing. Because Isaiah 11 says this. It says, the Spirit of the Lord. Now, this is before Jesus is born. Isaiah is talking about what Jesus is going to be like. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord will rest on Jesus, will rest on him. Now, look, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding. Now, just think about that, those two words. Wisdom, he knows, but understanding. There are a lot of people who know everything, but they're not very understanding. At least they think they know everything. But it says the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord. Look, we need to understand that one of the things that Jesus Christ does for us is he gives us somebody to talk to. He gives us somebody that we can talk to. In Hebrews chapter 4, we read this a lot, but we're going to read it again. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest, this is Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold fast our confession. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Let me read that again. You know, let's not gloss over that. We don't have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weaknesses. Now, a lot of times our view of God is that God knows our weaknesses. But a lot of times our view of God is not that he sympathizes with our weaknesses. See, Jesus doesn't just know what's going on in your life in a factual way. Jesus knows and understands. Jesus knows and actually sympathizes with you. Jesus is the son of God, but he's also the guy who stood at Lazarus' funeral. And as Lazarus is there and he's, they're going through this, this funeral process and Lazarus is, everybody's mourning Lazarus. This is a guy who began to cry with all of his friends because they were so sad about what was happening with with losing Lazarus. Jesus is the guy who's willing to feel what you're feeling and actually can and actually does. So there's times where you say nobody gets it, nobody understands, nobody, nobody, nobody can possibly understand my situation, maybe not here. But Jesus gets it. And that's pretty powerful. And that's why prayer is so important. When you read this and it says, we don't have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weaknesses. We was at all points tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. So, verse 16 says this. So let's come boldly to the throne of grace that we may, might obtain help, uh, obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Come boldly to obtain help. So if you're in that place where you're struggling and you're not sure who to talk to and you, you know, you're know you telling everybody, how you doing? I'm great, I'm fine. But really inside you're not. You have somebody that you can talk to 
you should try talking to Jesus. Because not only can he help, he wants to help. Think about what I'm saying. He wants to help you. The God of the universe who created everything wants to help you. Now the really cool thing about talking to Jesus is it may be a little bit awkward at first. But the thing we need to understand is there are a lot of things that maybe I don't talk to to Brian, or I don't talk to Sue, or I don't talk to Andrew, or I don't talk to Jim, I don't talk to some of you about, because there's some things that you really don't get about me. You know, nobody really has me figured out. I understand that, right? But, but there's things that people don't understand. But Jesus already knows you, and he understands. So, you know, I, 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 this is one of the things I really want us to get, is that, is that, if Jesus already knows everything that's going on in your life, you don't have that awkward time where you're trying to explain things to him. You don't have that awkward time where you're trying to tell him how you feel because he already knows how you feel. You don't have to, to have a fence and a barrier up to where you're pretending like you're not hurting, you're pretending like there's everything's okay because Jesus already knows that everything's not okay. Jesus already knows what's going on in your heart and your life and the things that you're feeling. Even though out here everything looks fine, Jesus knows what's in here. He already knows it. So why in the world wouldn't we want to talk to somebody who really does understand us and does get it? Jesus gets you. Nobody else may, but Jesus gets you and he understands and he wants so much part of your life. He wants so much for you to, to understand. He wants you to know that he not only knows, but he understands what you're going through in your life. Proverbs 8.14, he says this. He says, counsel is mine. Now look at that. God's telling us, I am understanding. I am understanding. Isn't that kind of powerful? Your view of God sometimes is that God knows everything, but but what if the God who knows everything doesn't just know, but he understands your situation? <laughs> wow. I don't know about you, but to me, I think that is, that, is, that is awesome. That's amazing. He has the ability to get right to the root of the issue. He knows your needs even better than you know your needs. He knows what you're thinking before you say anything. You know, there are times where Jesus is, is walking, walking you know, on this earth and, and there are things going on. He's, he's in a meeting. He's sitting down to dinner with a bunch of important people, a bunch of Pharisees. And this, this woman comes in and, and she begins to break this, this expensive uh, oil to anoint Jesus. And she's crying. And she's washing his feet. And she's doing all this. And these guys are sitting back and they're thinking. If you read the story, it says they're thinking, if Jesus knew who this person was, he probably wouldn't let this be going on. They're thinking this. And then I love the next verse that says, Jesus answered them. So they're thinking it, and Jesus answers out loud what they're thinking. That's pretty cool, right? So, so if he already knows and he already understands, we need to understand that God knows you. He knows you. Jesus knows you. Psalm 139, we talked about it last week. It says that he understands your past. He understands your present. He understands your future. He knows when you're sitting down. He knows that he has plans for your life. He created you. He, and David, when he's thinking about, when David is describing how well God actually knows them, you know, on the one side, that's a little scary because God knows, right? But on the other side, it's, it's pretty amazing because God knows. God understands. And David's response to that, in Psalm 139, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. God really understands where I am, so I don't, have, I don't have to pretend to be something I'm not with God. I can just be me. And, and guess what? If I'm just me with you, you may not like me. Right? So I'll put on my front sometime as I need to here. But I can be just me with God and know that he loves me. He likes me. He loves me. That's who I am. Because he created me. That's who I am powerful. Everybody needs somebody to talk to. We've got to make sure we're talking to the right person. And Jesus is that person. We need to talk to Jesus. He already knows you. He already understands. So the next thing we need to do is pretty simple. We need to come to Jesus. 
He's our counselor. The first step in getting help, anybody will tell you who's ever been through any kind of counseling or any kind of a program, is that you're never going to get help until you acknowledge that you need help. And I want to tell you, we all need help. You may have come to that place in your life where you figured it out. You may not have come to that place where you figured it out. But I can tell you that you need help. I need help. Because God tells us, the God who created us, the creator of this world tells us that we all are broken. He says he calls it sin. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of him. We're all broken. And our first step to getting fixed is to acknowledge that we're broken and we need God. And we ask him. See, there's, there's a God-shaped vacuum in your life. There's a God-shaped hole in your life that only he can fill. And we try to fill it with a lot of different things. And it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. But Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross for your sins. Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross so you could have a relationship with him. To live apart from Christ is empty. You may not even know you're empty. Sometimes you don't realize you're empty until you have the opportunity to be full. You know, kind of like my gas tank on my car. You know, sits on empty most of the time. But every now and then, it gets full. Life apart from Jesus is empty. In Christ, we experience hope. In Christ, we experience peace. And in, in Christ, we experience meaning, purpose, relationship. We get to be part of this amazing family. A family that where you walk in the doors and they say, hey, here you're having dog problems. Right? In a family where you don't have to pretend to be something you're not. God gives us a family here and God gives us a family here. And it's a powerful thing to belong. And that's what God wants for each of you. We all want this. We all need Jesus. The disciples were following Jesus and a bunch of people left. A bunch of people were following Jesus and they left them. And Jesus looked at his disciples and said, will you leave me also? And Simon Peter answered in John 6 and he says this, Lord, to whom should we go? I mean, where else are we going to go? Where else are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Jesus is the only one who has the words of life. And it's an abundant life. And it's an awesome life. It's a life you and I both need to experience. Matthew eleven twenty eight tells us it's, it's time to let go and give your life to Christ. We need to get baptized. We need to publicly acknowledge that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And he says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, he said, come to me. I know you. I know what's really going on in your life. I know the needs in your life that you may not even have acknowledged. I know your shortcomings. I know I know that you're messing up. I know that you're, you know, I know all these things. And I still love you. And I love you enough that I sent Jesus. And now we have this opportunity, and he says, come, come to me. Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's an awesome thing, I can tell you, to live life uh, with Jesus in your life. I mean, um, as a parent, being a parent is hard, isn't it? You know, parents shake your head, yes. <laughs> it's hard sometimes, right? It's amazing to have somebody to talk to where you're not sure if you're doing it right. It's amazing to have somebody to talk to who you know will hear you and the Holy Spirit of God will point you in the right direction. It's amazing to have a book to read that is just absolute truth. It's not filtered, it's not a it's not like a political spin. It's, it is absolute truth. And this is what God wants you to be able to experience in your life. He wants you to be able to experience what the woman in adultery experienced. She's having relationship issues. She comes to Jesus. There's the woman at the well. She has all these. She's been married how many times? She comes to Jesus. It, it, it's so many things. Peter, you know, he, he lets Jesus down. He denies Christ. Jesus is, comes, comes looking for him. David, you know, commits adultery with Bathsheba. You know, he's living in immorality. And, and, and Jesus is, is still there, and God still loves him, and God knows, and God does not condone the behavior, but God still says there's forgiveness and grace. Come to me. Talk to me. 
And watch and see what can happen in your life. And David does, and he receives forgiveness and grace and forgiveness. As you read this book, it's not just stories. It's people who decided to come and talk to Jesus and receive that these amazing things happened in their lives. Hebrews 4, we need to find grace to help in our time of need. We just read this. And it happens when we come to Jesus. Right? So, this morning, we'll make it simple. Come to Jesus. Right? I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus in a way that you feel like you can talk to him about anything? Because that's what a real relationship with God looks like. Have you acknowledged that you're broken and that you need him in your life? And if you have, man, awesome. I hope you're taking advantage of what it means to be able to talk to him anytime you want. It's kind of crazy to think, isn't it? That God allows us to talk to him, talk to God of the universe. I mean, I have to make appointments to see my doctor. I have to make appointments to go to the dentist. I have to make appointments to go to the vet. I have to make appointments to talk to Bryant sometimes. I have to, you know, you got all this stuff going on, right? And God says, my door's open. You can come talk to me anytime. How crazy is that? We take it for granted, but that's what God wants. If you've not given your life to Christ, I invite you to do that this morning. It's not like a, a religious thing. It, it's, it's a relationship thing. God, I'm broken. I need help. And, and I'm just going to today give my life to you, and then I'm going to follow you in scriptural baptism because I want everybody to know what I've done and then watch and see how your life changes. So the message this morning is the same message it really is every week. It's come to Jesus, right? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray that you bless our time together this morning. We need you. We all need you, Lord. And I just pray if there's somebody here who's never accepted you as their Lord and Savior, that today you would do something amazing. You would do something amazing and powerful in lives today. And God, as, as hearts begin to open up and as your Holy Spirit begins to to, to, to convict us and to draw us to you, I just pray this morning, God, that we would just respond by coming to you and giving our hearts and our lives to you. God, I know that there are people here today, Father, I know who need you as their Lord and Savior, and I thank you that that invitation is open to all only because of Jesus Christ crucified, and for that we're so thankful. Lord, I just pray this morning also because I know that while there are a lot of people who have said they're fine today, they've greeted people walking in the door that maybe they're really not. And, and I can't see that, and the people sitting next to them may not see that, but you see that and you know. So Lord, this morning I'm praying that you would just pierce through all the pride, pierce through all the walls that we set up. And I just pray, God, you just help them to see and know how much they are loved and how much they are cared for this morning. Lord, I thank you. I can't begin to tell you how, how much we appreciate as your children being able to talk to you, just to talk to you. And I know that you listen. I know that you care. I know that you will always point us in the right direction. We love you this morning in Jesus' name. We invite you to stand. And uh, every service, we kind of end the same way. We have this time where we stand. We kind of stop for a few moments and... The idea really is just to think about what we've heard. The crazy thing about it is, you know, as you sit into a sermon at this church or any other church or you listen to something on, on the radio or wherever it is, God, God speaks to us through his word all at the same time, right? But I also know that God speaks to you individually about the things that you have going on in your life. And there have been things that have been said this morning that I know that God is talking to you about. And it may be something different for you than the person sitting next to you. But I just know it. I know that's how God works. I know that's what he does. And so this morning, whatever God has been talking to you about, I'm going to ask you to let down some walls I'm going to ask you to open up to him. Maybe it's just coming to him and saying, God, you know, 
I've tried to do this on my own for a long time. I, I need you. If you've never accepted Christ your Savior, I would love if you would just come and let someone show you how to pray a prayer. And just It's more than praying a prayer, it's, but it's from your heart giving your life to Christ. That someone would love to help you with that. You may be hearing you say, you know, Pastor Doug, you know, I, I don't like to talk about it, but there are a lot of things going on right now in my life. You can talk to him right now. You can come and kneel down at this altar and somebody will come and put their arms around you and pray with you. Because that's what we do and that's what church is. We're a family. And God is our Father. And God is, we're praying, God gets involved in that conversation. And wow, amazing things happen. You all need Jesus. I'm going to ask you this morning if you'll just kind of open up to that and do what he's telling you to do. If God spoke in your heart, I'm going to invite you to come. Come and and talk to him. You want to pray at your seat? Pray at your seat. But this time is for you. As the music plays, will you open up to him? Talk to him. Let him be your counselor this morning. Their needs come. Gosh, it's hard to step out of the aisle. Everybody will be looking at me. It's hard for Jesus to hang on the cross and everybody looking at him there too. Right? Jesus is not so much about private. Um, he likes us to publicly identify with him and humble ourselves before him. It's exciting to see what God does when we do that. Come to Jesus. Jesus, it is just so much fun to be your children. It is uh, it's exciting to know that wherever we go, that you're with us. <laughs> that we can talk to you. I mean, in a moment's notice. We can let down our guards. We don't have to pretend to be something that we're not. And we could just love you and be loved by you. God, every person sitting in this room needs that in their life. You're getting it. So this morning, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so available. Thank you for being somebody that we can talk to. Thank you for being somebody who always points us in the right direction. And for that reason, this morning, we praise you and we lift you up son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks and be seated. I appreciate you coming uh, this morning and being a part of our service. We, we, we just love the fact that we get to come together every week, and um, I hope this never becomes just a thing that you have to do. Right? I hope that this is something that, that, that we realize the awesome privilege we have to come and to sing songs to our God and to worship Him, be together as a church family. It's, 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 it's what God intended. It's what He wants for us. So that's great. Thanks for coming. There are a couple of announcements. This week on Tuesday night, I, does anybody know what the weather is going to be Tuesday night? Warm. Oh, I'm thinking like short I thought he was trying to sell it. All right. It's going to be really warm coming out Tuesday night. Yeah, we're upper 40s. That's awesome. Um, we are going to have a hay wagon right out here in the parking lot. And we want to invite you to come and bring your kids. And we are going to go Christmas caroling. And people will think we're crazy because they don't do that anymore. But we do. All right. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to go through some of our subdivisions around here. 
Uh, I'm a little disappointed this year the band kind of... Whoa! Wow! All right! Now, you understand what's going on? I kind of thought we were leaning toward canned music this year, but this year, taking one for the team is going to be the band behind us on the hay wagon, playing their guitars, playing the keyboards, playing the drums or cajon or whatever, and then they're going to be playing loud enough that nobody will hear you sing. You know, so, so, so we can come out, we'll drive through the neighborhood, people will say, what's that racket out there? And it's really a lot of fun. People come out, they bring their kids, we get to kind of tell them that Jesus loves them. You know, sometimes we'll pass out candy canes, and sometimes we'll just go through, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is a fun night. It's a way to let people know that, that God loves them and, and remind them what the season is about. It's about Jesus. So, man, band, hats off. I didn't know we were doing that. That's, that's fantastic. So, Tuesday night, 6.30 really dress warm because we ride on that wagon we'll, we'll ride it to going through the subdivisions this isn't too bad coming back you know bring us some blankets or something if that drive back um can be a little bit chilly so uh plan on that we'll come back with we'll some hot chocolate and stuff afterwards everybody's invited to come and be a part of that it's always a lot of fun so that's tuesday night 6 30. tonight um we've all talked about being loving and caring and how much it means to be family that's all out the door tonight Right. Tonight is our annual church Christmas party, and we do a gift exchange where we steal gifts, and the gloves come off. All right, so uh, if you would like to come and be a part of that, everybody is welcome. It's a Christmas uh, party. It's a potluck. We're going to be having fried chicken. Uh, the church is providing fried, fried chicken and drinks, and then um, you bring side dishes and desserts. It's always a good time together. And then we have the gift exchange where we steal gifts all night long. And it really gets uh, interesting. You know, I thought I knew people, you know, and then I came to the church Christmas party. And I found out, wow, all right, it's a lot of fun. The only night of the week, the only night of the year that you're allowed to steal at Community Baptist, and uh, it's allowed tonight. We're going to have some fun with that. So I, I invite you to come. We really do have a good time. It's just a fun night to get That's tonight at 6 o'clock. We'd love to have you. Um, we do have coming up is our, our Christmas weekend coming up, and then we will be having a Christmas Eve service. Um, all the information is in the bulletin. The Christmas Eve service is a very short service. Um, so we come together on Christmas Eve. Uh, I, I please ask you to not dress up. I'm not dressing up. Um, just come as you are, and um, we just sing some Christmas songs. We read the Christmas story. Um, we're just kind of reminded maybe a five-minute devotion. Um, it's something very quick, but something very meaningful. And if you have time, I realize everybody has different family plans. But if you're able to come, we'd love to have you be part of that as well. Next week is Christmas. I invite somebody to come celebrate the birth of Christ. And let's be dismissed with a song. Oh, and, and also, Doug, just another quick announcement. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. If you are, um, if you were involved in the uh, young adult small group, the college, post-college small group over the summer and into the school year this year that we've been meeting on Thursdays. We're actually going to be having another Christmas party um, on Thursday. It's at my house. If you are fortunate enough to go to college or post-college and you have not lots of money like I do, make sure to not bring a present. Just come as you are. It's at my house. Details are in the bulletin. It's at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be a good time for us to just kind of get back together and, and celebrate and study the world. By the way, gift exchange, five to ten dollars. If you don't have to participate, it's a lot of fun to just watch TV. <laughs> All right. Please stand. Right.
Jesus Christ is Lord. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior.